A lot of you guys were wondering how to download Photoshop beta so you can use the new AI tool in it called Generator Fill. So I wanted to go ahead and show you guys how to download it and also some tips and tricks on using that new tool Generator Fill. One thing you will need is a subscription to Adobe. So that's very important. I actually have the photography plan. I believe it's $10 a month that includes Lightroom and Photoshop. As long as you have even just that plan, that subscription, then you should be able to download Photoshop beta. But before I continue, I do want to let you know that this video is sponsored by Adorama. Adorama is an industry leading retailer that has been serving photography, videography, and audio customers for almost 50 years now. Their motto is everyone is a creator and they do their best to unleash that creator within us all by providing us with the tools and expertise necessary to get the job done right. I personally shop at Adorama for both the great deals on products I use and recommend, plus the great customer service on those products as well. If you find yourself interested in any product I talk about in today's video, definitely check out the links in the description area below for links to those products and be sure to use those links if you decide to order. On the screen right now is the Creative Cloud for desktop. This is the program that Adobe uses to download programs legitimately in case you guys are thinking otherwise. And like I said before, I have the photography subscription. So as long as you have that, then you should be able to download Photoshop beta. And it's actually hiding a little bit on the side here, not all the way over here where it says all apps or updates, but over here where it says beta apps, you want to click on that. And then this is where you're going to be able to download Photoshop beta. Since I already have it installed, it just says open for me. So here I am in Photoshop beta and I wanted to work on this image to demonstrate how to use the new generator fill tool in Photoshop beta because a lot of you guys were curious how I removed the different people and distractions in this image when I shared the edited version in my Facebook lighting group. What's really important to this new generative fill tool in Photoshop beta is this new contextual taskbar that you're seeing here on the top. It is going to be somewhere on the, you know, in the middle of the image or on the lower section of the image, but I have it here on the top and you can actually pin it where it's at right now because I don't want it to go ahead and just move around and be in front of my image. I want to be able to see the image. So that's why I have it here pinned on top. If you don't see this contextual taskbar, you want to go to window and then click on contextual taskbar right there and it should show up. The very first tool that I want to share with you guys when it comes to using this new generative fill tool in Photoshop beta is that everything that it creates is only going to be 1024 by 1024 pixels in size. So if you were to create a selection bigger than 1024 by 1024 pixels, like this large selection, if I were to go ahead and just generate this new layer right here and just remove all these different distractions, the two guys in the softbox, what it's going to do is going to create a 1024 by 1024 image and just stretch it over this entire section. So it's going to be noticeably lower in resolution. So here is the first result that was created. Every time you use this new tool, it does create three different versions. I actually like this first one a lot, but here is the second version that I actually do like as well. And here is going to be the third version, the third variation. And I'll just keep it on that first one. And it does look nice to my eye right here when I'm zoomed out. But when I zoom in, that's when you can really see the lower resolution from this new generative fill layer. So if I hold down control and I click on the mask here, you can see everything that I selected, you can see is much, much lower in resolution because like I said before, it's only gonna be a 1024 by 1024 image. And if it's larger, if the selection is larger than that, it's just gonna stretch that image all over that selection. So here on the left is my original image. You can see how nice it looks like compared to the right side, which is all this new generative fill layer. And again, it's just because it's a small image stretched out across this entire selection, which is pretty big on say about 3000 pixels maybe, because this image is about, 7,952 pixels by 5,304 pixels. What I would recommend actually is going ahead and just, you know what, let me just trash this layer real quick. And I actually came up with a method to keep a good resolution for all the generative fill layers that you're gonna be using. And the method that I came up with is getting the marquee tool, going to where it says style, clicking on that and going to fixed size. And I did change it to a thousand by a thousand pixels. So every time that I click with this new marquee tool, you can see that everything that's going to be right here in the selection is going to be only a thousand by a thousand pixels so that I'm staying within the limits of the generative fill tool. And now when I go ahead and do a generative fill and generate to kind of remove the things that I want to remove from this image, it's going to be a better resolution than the previous result that we had, which was very stretched out and lower in resolution. You can see that it didn't quite get everything that I wanted to get. It didn't get the entire softbox because I didn't select the entire softbox because I was working within the limits of this new generative fill tool. If I did want to keep this same max resolution image that I'm working with, the 7,900 by 5,300 pixel image, then I would go ahead and just keep doing what I'm doing right now, 
which is getting a box and then just going generate a fill, generate, and just keep doing that throughout the entire image for all the different distractions. But for the sake of this image and what I would recommend you guys do for your own images is actually change the size of the image to something smaller. So I would actually recommend 20 or 2048 pixels on the longest side, changing it to that size, which is actually gonna be good for sharing on Facebook and Instagram. So the way to resize your image is going to control alt I and then changing the longest side to 2048 pixels. So now the image is much smaller. It's 2048 pixels by 1366 pixels. So now when I do the exact same thing that I did before, click in here, this is a selection of 1000 by 1000 pixels. So now I have a larger selection to remove things from my image. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do that right now. I'm gonna go ahead and click on different areas that I want to remove, like let's say this section right here, which has the arm a bit and the softbox and you know, actually move it a little bit so I can get all these three different people. And then what I'm gonna do now is because I feel like this area right here is fine and this, you know, this area is fine. I'm gonna get the lasso tool and I'm gonna go to this third section here, which is subtract from selection. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just select things that I want to keep from this image that I don't want to be altered in any way with this new generative fill tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and just select this tree and this area up here on top because I think it looks fine. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for the right side. Everything that I think looks fine, I'm gonna go ahead and just remove it from the selection. And now that I have a good selection of this image that I want to go ahead and remove, now I'm gonna go ahead and click on generate a fill and click generate. Actually, one thing that I've noticed when I'm using this tool is that if I actually type in remove, instead of just leaving it blank, then it will give me a less chance of an error that will pop up sometimes that it will say something inappropriate was created. So it didn't create any sort of variations for you. So in order to reduce the chance of that happening, I've started to type remove and I've noticed that it does give me a less likely chance of getting that error. So even though by default, when you leave the prompt empty, it will go ahead and remove distractions. Now what I do is I type in remove and then I click on generate. <laughs> so, so the reason why it didn't um, completely remove these two people is because I didn't select all the entire area where they were in the way because I didn't want to affect the Kinsa girl here, my niece, because I had a solution for that that I wanna show you guys in a second. So let me go ahead and just see the second variation. <laughs> and then the third variation. So the first variation looks okay. It looks the, the most okay for what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna remove them in a second. So let me go to just continue on and then I'll show you guys how to remove different things, the different distractions and people that are next to the subject that you want to keep there. Now that I removed everything but the two <laughs> zombies here in the back, I wanted to go ahead and show you guys how I would remove those, but I'll explain that in a quick second because one tip that I wanted to mention is that with this new generated fill layer, because it's generating three different versions of each selection with every different layer, in order to save space on your computer and make your computer work less hard than it needs to be easier, what I would recommend whenever you're done with your generated fill layers is getting a blank layer, keeping that one selected on top, holding down shift and selecting all the other layers here, and then right clicking and clicking merge layers. And that is gonna only get everything that you wanted to keep from these generative fill layers instead of keeping everything, all those other different variations that you didn't use. And again, this is gonna make your file size for Photoshop, is gonna make it much smaller and also make your computer work easier, work less hard than it needs to be. So now that I have that merged together, let me get this one last selection here. And luckily enough, it is getting the entirety of the my niece here and the two zombies. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and just fix the selection here so that I'm keeping the trees and grass around her, around the zombies and around my niece so that it's only gonna remove them. And then I'm gonna go ahead and continue. So now it's only gonna remove them. So now I'm gonna click generate a fill. I'm gonna go ahead and type in remove just in case to avoid any of those errors that I usually get. So it did remove Remove her and the two zombies. Let's see, that's the first variation. Here's the second variation, which looks pretty nice. And then the third one looks a little bit less, it looks more repeated here. So I actually like the second version. So I'm gonna keep this variation here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing like I said before, I'm gonna hold down shift, click this bottom one, click merge layers. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a mask on this layer here, this new generative layer. I'm gonna create a mask by clicking on this bottom here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the paintbrush 
which is the shortcut is going to be B. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just slowly paint my niece back in. So everything that's removed is white. So I'm going to go ahead and paint black to reveal my niece again. So let me go ahead and just do that. So although it's not perfect, this is how it looks like the very quick rough version that I just did removal, subject removal for you guys. So, and this is pretty much the end result here. I think that's pretty much it for this video. But one thing I did want to mention is that in case you guys were wondering why I didn't go ahead and just remove the subject like this, selecting the subject next to her like this, Oh, that's very rough uh, selection there, but I'll show you guys what I mean. If I were to go ahead and just select these two people next to her like this and trying to keep, you know, the selection, the selecting of her very minimal, what it's going to do is when I click generate a fill and generate, what it's going to do is that because I have this area of her hair and cheek and her hand, her fingers selected, it's going to create some monstrosity. I'm pretty sure about that. <laughs> so like I said before, it did remove the two people there next to her, but if I zoom in, you can see that it just warped her hand here. It did do a good job here on the right side, her arm. So you can see this is the before and this is the after. It actually made her arm a little bit slimmer, but it did alter the dress on the right side here. And it did <laughs> really mess up her arm there. It made a monstrosity of her arm <laughs> right there. Um, the hair and the cheek also were affected, but that's actually the first variation. See the second variation, it created somebody here in the back. And the third variation, it just created some weird thing here. But again, it basically altered the arm here because of my selection. So that's on me, but I wanted to show you guys a much cleaner result, which is right here, which is just going ahead and just removing everything from that area, including the subject, and then just painting the subject back in. But yeah, that's pretty much how I remove things from my photos using the new tool called Generative Film. If you have any questions at all, let me know in the comment section below. But I just want to give one last thanks to Adorama for sponsoring this video because it does allow me to focus on my channel and make free content for you guys. So definitely check them out. Take care guys and I'll see you in the very next video.